this presentation, we will continue building our statement of cash flows using the direct method, now focusing in on the investing activities. What we've done so far is to create our worksheet from the information on the left, including a support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Comparative balance sheet and an income statement and some added information. This is going to give us this worksheet, more of a trial balance format. And of course, we're looking here at this difference column, trying to get to this difference of 61,900 by finding a home for all other differences. So in other words, if we find a home for all of these differences with all other accounts involved in this worksheet, then it'll add up to the 61,900, which is the change in cash. So it's just a puzzle. We're just going to reformat this thing so it'll work. All right, so here we go. We've done this for all of the cash flows from operation, operating activities, and we've done that and we've kind of color coded where we've gotten these numbers. So we've color coded where those numbers are coming from. Now we're gonna go through the cash flows from investing activities. You'll note that we kind of skipped over a few things here. Uh, and why did we do that? When we did, when we did this with the cash flows uh, on a direct method, we can basically go down to the income statement and we picked up all the income statement line items that apply and then looked for the related balance sheet account that would be the offsetting accrual type of account so that we can then convert the income statement to a cash basis. Now we're gonna go through and kind of pick up the rest, pick up everything else that's a difference here. We gotta find a home for all these differences. Now the investing activities is one of the most confusing oftentimes because it typically deals with oftentimes selling of property, plants and equipment. So. In this case, we have we have this change in equipment here. So this change in equipment went from 200 to 262, 250. Uh, it's an increase, and you would think that that would mean that we would purchase equipment. That looks like a purchase of equipment. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. I'm going to make that red. It looks like we purchased equipment. I got to put that somewhere. Now you might think, well, why wouldn't that go in the operating activities if we purchased equipment? Um, and note, equipment's always going to go in investing. You could just memorize that. You probably want to think through it a little bit. The, the thought process I would always give is, you know, when you think of any of these differences, the question is, is the major journal entry related to them part of the income statement? If it is, then it's going to be the operating activity uh, because the operating activities are going to be kind of like converting the income statement. If it's not, then the question is, are you dealing with the purchase of an asset, a long-term asset? And if it is, then it's gonna be investing because we're investing in the future. We're investing in equipment. If there's a difference up here that, that doesn't have to do with purchasing or selling an asset, then it's probably financing because the, the whole purpose of it is just to get capital for the running of the business. So in this case, we obviously are, if we're dealing with equipment, the journal entry is to debit equipment and to credit either cash and or uh, a loan. Uh, none of those are income statement accounts. So it shouldn't be in the operating activities uh, if we sold the equipment then we debit cash we credit the equipment um, and and uh, we might have a gain or loss we also have to take off and debit the accumulated depreciation but so that no, none of that the main components aren't part of the income statement in other words the gain or loss will be but the major components aren't are not part of the income statement so that means it's going to be dealing with a purchase or sale of something that we invested in equipment so we're going to be down here in the investing activities. Now, the other thing that's confusing about this is obviously if we see this difference, this isn't enough information usually to, to give to give us the full story. We're going to see this and go, hmm, it looks like that it, it increased. So I'm going to assume we purchased equipment, but that might not be the whole story. We might have purchased multiple pieces of equipment. We might have purchased some equipment and sold some equipment. Plus, this account's going to be tied to the accumulated depreciation account as well. And we may have purchased and sold equipment that was financed. We might have loans related to it. So the purchase of equipment, because it's a big line item, is often 
more complex than just one purchase of equipment. So uh, in order to do that in, in a book problem like this, we would go through the, the detail and say, what else did they give us related to the purchase? If we, if we are in, a, in practice, of course, we would just look at the detail of this item in terms of the GL account and say, okay, what's in the GL account? And then we'll look at all the journal entries related to that GL account. We will do that in this problem, but not now. What we're gonna do now is not get into the detail of this because that'll muddy up the waters. What I wanna do is just get to this number first. I wanna find a home for all these numbers, get to this number, and then we can go back and try to get to the detail. So for now, we're gonna put something in here that's too simplified. It's wrong because it's too simplified because we we're not gonna look for all the data because if we do, if I start pulling up, up numbers that don't tie out to this number, then it's gonna mess things up. Why don't I wanna dig into it and tie out to it now? Because that'll make it more complicated here to figure out if we're in balance. And I don't have all the other components lined up yet in order to piece out what's happening here in any case. I can't change any other accounts. I don't have anything in the financing, which is probably gonna be related to it in a loan. So it's better for me just to put this number here somewhere now, reconcile, and then go back. So what we're gonna do then is just look for all other accounts that are gonna be related to this equipment account. And that there's gonna be accumulated depreciation will be related, so I'm gonna make that red. That's part of equipment in essence. And then we have the depreciation expense that's gonna be related to it. Now these two note that if there was no sale of equipment, they should be the same. So I can just include those two here and they'll cancel each other out. In this case, something must have happened. They're not the same. There must have been a sale or something like that. So we're gonna net those two things out here in the same account and then we'll compensate for that once we dig down on the journal entry. And then we have this loss on sale of equipment. Again, that's part of, of this. It's gonna have to net out somehow to this equipment. So I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna say, hmm, that's a kind of a mess. There's probably a lot more detail. Luckily, there shouldn't be too many pieces of equipment sold because we don't, it's not like looking into the GL of, of cash where there's going to be a ton of activity. We're not buying equipment every day, hopefully. So it should be fairly easy for us to, to figure out a few journal entries and then break that out. But for now, we're just going to lump that into an account and I'm going to call it uh, cash paid for purchase of equipment. And we're just going to use the same process we had up here. I'm just going to say negative of this minus this minus this minus this and again you can kind of think through why it would all be negative like that to pick up all those i mean obviously here if we purchased the equipment then we are, we're assuming we paid cash even though you know we didn't so it should you would think it would be well we may not have paid all cash we probably financed that's probably part of our our process that we'll have to deal with and we may have received some equipment and purchased some equipment. So there's more detail, but it looks like just from this that uh, that we purchased equipment and that, would, that should decrease our cash. So we're gonna assume for now that we just pay cash for one piece of equipment and leave it at that. And we're gonna say, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to go back to that, but I'm gonna leave it there, get in balance, and then go back and fix it in a systematic way. And that's basically all we're gonna have at this point in time for the net for the net cash provided by uh, or used in in this case investing activities so i'm just going to pull that down right now i'm going to leave a space because i think there uh, was a sale and i know there was because we had a loss up in sale so we're going to have another line item once we dig into this which is going to be uh, cash received cash received from sale of equipment but we don't know what that is yet we'll we'll work that out so I'm going to sum this up. I'm going to sum these two columns up over here. I'm going to say equals the sum of these two columns. And that's what we have now. Next time we'll go through the cash flows from financing activities and that'll hopefully pick up uh, the remainder.